Hey everybody, I'm Chanel Herlin here for the new music buzz at the Vista Theatre for the Range 15 premiere. The red carpet is about to start, so let's check it out. Good afternoon, Mr. Best. What's Range 15? It's a fallback point for an ELE. Shit. I'm not gonna leave the fate of the world to you fuck off. I prefer my guy. Keep your ears buttered up, last set fire to the rain. So why are we going to Range 15? That's where the scientists are and we have the cure. From the glass. If this was a zombie movie, you'd be getting ripped through that glass right about now. This is a zombie movie. Oh my God. Look, Matt. Sometimes things can look pretty bleak. Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! Yeah! Oh, We're all gonna die because you're badass. You fat, fat, fatty. Fuck! I can't even fucking believe how fat you are. Now, how is it working on this film, Range 15? It's it's different from other projects because. The only people on the project are people that want to do it, you know, and in Hollywood you get that douchebag act, Gary Busey, who's just doing it for the paycheck, Gary Busey, and, you know, no one wants to work with him, he's miserable, but no, everyone wanted to be part of it, everyone was happy, the background, it didn't matter how hot it was or how much makeup they had on, they were happy to be there, and from the beginning to the fundraising to, to the theaters, 200, what, 241 theaters and counting that it's going to play at, that doesn't happen for independent film without a lot of love and support behind it and you know in a time where we're so divided it's nice to see everyone get behind veterans and, and the military and America. Yes, America. And now what attracted you to the script? What brought you onto the project initially? Um, I think Ross recommended me and then Jared called me and they're like oh you know the script and they sent me the script and I read it and I loved it. I, I'm a comedic actress and I like messed up. I'm messed up in real life. I'm probably not acting. I'm probably only acting when I have to be serious or I have to do CSI or something. I'm like serious. Uh, you know, I love messed up humor. That's me every day. And I, hopefully I hold my own. I know it's a military comedy, but I'm excited. I haven't seen it yet. I mean, I was there, but I haven't actually like seen the film. I've missed all the other screenings, so I'm kind of excited. So are you able to just sit back and relax and enjoy yourself on the screen, or are you quite critical of your performance? It's weird. Uh, everyone has an idea of what they look like and what they sound like, and I'm sorry about my voice in advance. I've heard my voicemail. Um, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's weird to see yourself. It's, it's very, it takes you out of your body. I like, I like it when I can hear people laugh at something I've said. You know, the times where I've had premieres and I make people laugh, that's the best feeling. That's what I'm here for. I'm like, oh, like, I, I am what I love to do and, and kind of excited. You know, it might be grossed out, it might be laughing, it might be tears, it might be throw up, I don't really care, <laughs> as long as it's entertaining. Great, and do you have friends and family here tonight supporting you? I don't, Mom. Uh, and I'm not bitter at all, but I have, I have lots of friends, and friends can be like family. Uh, they're the family you choose to have. And I've been lucky, of the five years I've done acting, to have really good friends and, and peers, and, and just, you know, even if you only see them once every two years, you feel like, you know, you, you've been through, you know, maybe like the military, you've been through something with them, and you just, it's always a good feeling. And there's a lot of people here tonight. I know, it's like a birthday party I never got. It's nice to meet you. So tell me about the film. What is your involvement? Um, I play the Colonel's daughter uh, and uh, one of the very many love interests of Matt Best. <laughs> and there's a key scene. That's about it. <laughs> and what was it like working with Matt? What's um? Well, I know him. So pretty normal. <laughs> no, no starstruck moment there. Oh God, no. <laughs> and what was it like working on the film? Um, it was nerve-wracking. It's the first film I've ever been in, uh, but it was a lot of fun. Everybody was very down-to-earth, uh, and I got to meet a lot of stars from my childhood that I was starstruck by. <laughs> so tell me, Russ, this is an incredible project, and to see such an amazing support here tonight, are you able to just relax and enjoy your film, or are you still quite critical of your work? Yeah, no, no, no. I smoked a ton of weed in the parking lot, so I feel great. <laughs> I feel really great. I'm actually, I love these lights. Like, yeah. No, it's great. You look fantastic. Oh, you look fantastic. Yeah. I'm yeah, loving that gray there, cap. Thank you so much. <laughs> it was about 98 degrees today. No, no Nick Lachey pun intended, but I, I was, I was really sweating. So I threw, a, I threw a fucking, I went Ken Griffey Jr. on it. Oh, Ken. 
Okay. Threw the hat on backwards. Oh gosh, well at least it's cooled down a bit now for you guys to watch the movie and but a peak. A nice a nice breeze is picked up. A nice Australian breeze is picked up. So I'm not from Australia, but nice neither. try. <laughs> Me neither. I'm not either. Well, who says we can't both love the same continent? Exactly. Continent love is blind. It really is. Now tell me, what was it like working with your cast during the process of the film? Uh, they were amazing. Yeah, uh, they, they were amazing. Um, uh, whenever you get to work with, uh, you know, U.S. military veterans, it's... Uh, <laughs> I, I got. I, I don't want to sound shitty or cliche about it, but they they're just harder workers than like normal people. So they're never late. They're always on time. They always want to rehearse. Like um, it's it's a blast. I wish everybody was like that. But usually everybody's lazy and they're like, "Fuck! I want your sandwich. I want your, why is your sandwich bigger than mine? Why is your why is your trailer bigger than mine? I still want that sandwich." And then they'll go back to the sandwich. And you're like, "Jesus, man, lay off the sandwich." Like I get it. You know. And now, what is up next for you? Now that this film is done, Range 15, what's happening next? Holy cow. So I, I wrote a book that came out last year. It was a bestseller called A Night She Cries While He Rides a Steed. It was the first ever romance novel for dudes. So I have to write the sequel to that. Um, and uh, and then probably, more than likely, a sequel to this. Okay. Yeah. Can we expect a movie from the book that you're writing? I hope. That's a big budget. That's a really big budget. Uh, and i got to get a lot more famous. So if this does well opening weekend, yeah, maybe. If not, probably not. Well, well, it looks like it's going to do incredibly well, so congratulations Thank and really nice so to meet you. I really appreciate it. It was nice to meet you too. Yes. My mom's getting overwhelmed here. Oh, that's wonderful. So tell me, as an audience member, what can we expect from the film at Range 15? <laughs> that should be a good cutaway. That would be a good cutaway. Uh, a, a lot of intense company, you know, like uh, we, we push the levels on the comedic aspect of this film and I think that uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, and uh, a lot of what people need in their life, you know? And what was the process like from beginning, pre-production, all the way now till post-production? Lots of up and ups and downs, or was it pretty smooth sailing? How would you describe it? I think any, anybody that's been in the production business knows it's a grind. We started this from day one. We wrote the process. Uh, cheers, buddy. Uh, we, we wrote the film. We edited the film. We, we produced the film. So it... it it's a grind, but at the end of the day, it made the film what we wanted it to be, which is, uh, you know, kind of a narrative for what veterans should be and, and how our culture is. So we're super excited about it. <laughs> First of all, tell me, tell me about this picture. Well, this is uh, that's my hopefully my best friend, the Rock. I love you. We should be together, <laughs> friends, friends. Though, no, I just I, I love the dude. I think uh, he's an inspiration. I thought the outfit was outstanding, and I wanted to try and replicate it. So. I, I feel like I did a good job. You did a brilliant job. The jeans, the moon bag, the shirt, and the, and the chain. Watch. I missed the watch, yeah, but we're good. <laughs> okay, so talking about music, how do you get in the zone on, for a day on set? Do you listen to music to pump you up? I actually do, man. I'm one of those guys that, you, if you see a lot of my social media, I always have a headset in somehow, some way. So, uh, depending on the mood, right? Like, depending on the scene, what we're doing, I'm either going to listen to soft music, some loud music, whatever it is. And we had a lot of awesome talent uh, donate some music to us for this film and it's been insane I mean guys like uh, um, God the Hustle Standard uh, um, the Hustle Standard they, they donated some music for us I mean guys like a TMR the Marine Rapper like we had so many people like just donate music for the film that worked perfect for what we were trying to do so so it's been a fun ride with the music itself yeah. and what was it like working on set with such an incredible cast yeah, it's a blessing. I mean, like I said, like most of us, this is the first time we've ever done anything like this. So, so for us, we're just kind of soaking it in and, and hope that we can replicate it down the road because this is something we produced ourselves. I would love to do it again. It was a blast. It was a blast. Can you tell me about your character in Range 15? What is he like? I'm playing myself. Oh. I play a character called the celebrity. Okay. They can see they change it. They were a guy. I think he, he makes a point of meeting me. And then we have a, we uh, we both take our clothes off, sit in the jacuzzi. Oh, sorry, <laughs> wrong film. No, no, okay. no. So, so we do a little dialogue together, and then uh, he sees me at some restaurant or some event. It was such an honor to be in this. I'm, I'm just cracking up. Such a great, such a, it's such an honor to be in this movie. My whole family was all veterans. My mom was in the OSS and the Office of War Information during World War II. She was a spy. Yeah, my dad, all my uncles, they all fought wars, you know. I have two Purple Hearts. One died, one survived, but we had wounded his whole life, you know. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to backtrack a little bit to your joke in the jacuzzi. No, I'm South African. Close. <laughs> I made up the whole thing about jacuzzi never happened. I know, I know, but Rafi, how many... I don't have for that team yet. <laughs> I'd want a jacuzzi with you, perhaps, but now... Oh, no! 
don't okay, but I want to ask you. This is my question. How many adult not. films have you been in, Ryan? How many adult films have you been in? Tell me. I just so funny. I don't care how cute a guy is. I'm not going to be in a jacuzzi with a guy. I'm not batting for that team quite yet. <laughs> you never know. I get a little older and can't get the girls. You know, that guy's Harry Pinkham looks pretty good. You know, you never know. <laughs> Oh my asking? gosh, you're hilarious. Now, oh, we wait. are a music channel. Not a boring oh, interview. No, my yeah. question was, how many adult films have you been in, Rod? I have the world's record. You but I have another one. I've been in about 2,000 and over a couple of thousand adult movies. 33-year career. But also, no one knows this. I've been in uh, 56 uh, music videos. MTV, VH1, uh, YouTube. I have the world's record. No one's even close. Oh I've been in more music videos than Michael Jackson everybody. Well, I, but I music channel. Them. Yeah, I, I don't. I get, and I had one song that was a hit single called "Freak of the Week" with me, DJ Polo, and Ice T on the backside, and it was called "Freak of the Week." It was on Billboard 27 weeks. Oh you know, my goodness. Hey man. Well, last See, manly man. Man. We hug like manly. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't want to hear what he just told me earlier, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, about sharing a jacuzzi Matt, with a guy. Hey! hey what's oh, up, buddy? man. Good. Nice to see you there. What? You're a what fabulous harmonica player, I hear. I'm not bad. You're not oh, bad. Oh, 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 yeah, can I hold that up? What's do you have a tear? Want to hear an can Irish song, Danny? Want to do Danny Boy? Oh, that was Even bring the British folks. Yes. But you yes. got you to give me a hug, though. When you're okay, I'll give you a hug. Let's go. See if she cries when I play the song. Okay. It's Danny Boy. It's Irish song. Oh, Not yet. Here's a good part. Oh! <laughs> My goodness, that was beautiful. It's a lovely song. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, it's Ron Jeremy, known as being a harmonica player and an actor, and a violin player and a piano player. Go to Kid Rock's video, Cowboy. <laughs> I'm the guy on the piano. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Cowboy, I'm the guy playing with Joe C. And and um, Gary Coleman duke it out, and I'm the guy in the piano. Because Kid Rock knew I played piano, so I played piano in that, in that video. Yeah. And can we say together, you have just been buzzed to the camera. One, okay. two, three. You've you have just, just been, been buzzed. buzzed. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Lovely to meet you. <laughs> The red carpet is almost done. Range 15 is about to start. We've had quite an interesting night with some very interesting actors. I'm Chanel Herlin and you've just been buzzed.